The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft quality foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food, Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks, in sandwiches, and in hot dishes. And Velveeta, you know, helps supply important food values from milk. It's as digestible as milk itself. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical hot dishes. Tomorrow, get Velveeta. The cheese food of craft quality. Well, let's see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve. It's been several weeks since the great man organized the Jolly Boys Band... The first time they played, it was quite a shock to everybody. But time heals all wounds. And tonight, they're back at the club to try it again. Nice tone I'm getting out of Leroy's trombone tonight, eh, PV? Well, it's nice and loud. <laughs> I'm finally getting the lip part. Listen. How's that, Floyd? Sounds like you're letting a little wind leak through your mustache. <laughs> well, you have to blow in it. Where is everybody? Well, the judge was in for a bottle of Kalak water this afternoon. He said he'd be along with his flute. The chief can't make it, Commish. They cut the budget down at the jail, and he's on night duty. Uh, oh? Well, who's going to play the drum? Does somebody have to? Peavy, a piano, a violin, a flute, and a trombone won't sound very good without a bass drum. Well, don't look at me, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm the fiddler of the crowd. Uh. <laughs> oh, brother. Well, I guess I'll have to put on the foot attachment and beat the drum myself. Uh-uh. Commish, you got your hands full with that trombone without having your feet full, too. Well. You better let me take it along with the piano, Commish. I'm ambidextrous. Yes. I can beat the drum instead of tromping the loud pedal. Well, here comes the judge. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi, judge. Hurry up, Horace. Well, are you waiting for Peter Pan and his flute? <laughs> Peter Pan. How can an old goat with a pan like that play a flute? You're 15 minutes late, Horace. Yes, I know. I was chatting with the editor of the Summerfield Indicator. He tells me that Summerfield is getting its first D.P. Yeah, it's in tonight's paper. A D.P.? A little French boy. French boy? I thought Alvin Barkley was the V.P. Yep. <laughs> D.P., Floyd, it means displaced person. Yeah? It's a person who didn't have a home after the war, Floyd. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And guess what, Gildy? Your neighbor, Rumson Bullard, is taking him. He is? Well, good for him. I didn't know old Moneybags Bullard had a heart of gold. I thought it was just gold-plated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The little fellow's name is Jean-Pierre Bousset. Yeah, it sounds French, all right. Yes, and I understand he's just about Leroy's age, Gary. Well, I'll have to tell Leroy. He's arriving by train tomorrow. Tomorrow? But the Bullards aren't back from Florida yet. Oh, well, somebody will look after him. It's only for a day or two. And now, what's on the musical agenda this evening? Well, fellas, how about the Blue Danube? Here's the music... It goes like this. My, my, is that the Blue Danube? They must have rewritten it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Peavy. You're right, Peavy. That isn't the way it goes. It goes like this. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Judge, you sound like a hungry seagull. Oh, come on, gang. Just follow me. You won't get lost. Wait a minute. Start over, Floyd. I wasn't puckered. <laughs> well, it wasn't time for you to pucker. You... What? If you'll notice your music, Commish, first it's just a peeve and me. Then you on the poom poom. And the judge comes in on the tweet, tweet. That's right, 
Silver. Poom, poom, tweet, tweet. Well, let's do it. Okay, we're off. Everybody. Wait a minute. Hold everything. Stop the music. <laughs> What's the matter, Gilday? What's the matter? Judge, where are you? Why, I'm on page two. You're a half a page ahead of me. <laughs> I thought somebody was behind. Yes. That's the trouble with this band. We ain't in tempo. Maybe one of us ought to stop playing and lead the outfit. Perhaps all of us should stop playing. Kamish, how about you dropping out and directing us? Nothing doing, Floyd. I'm playing the trombone. Judge? No, indeed. The flute is very necessary in the Blue Danube. Well, if we keep playing it this way, it's going to be the black and blue Danube. <laughs> we wouldn't miss your flute playing, Judge. Well, we wouldn't miss your trombone either. It sounds like a wounded buffalo. <laughs> Watch it, Hooker. Oh, now, look, gang. If anybody says a word about my fiddling, I'm going home. I think all of us ought to go home. Yeah, we don't seem to be getting off on a good foot for 1950. <gasps> no, we don't. Playing these instruments and arguing seems such a waste of time. Who's arguing? Well, perhaps we should do like other clubs and have a project of some kind. Like what? Raffling off a turkey? I can move a lot of tickets at the barber shop. No, Floyd. No? I hate to admit it, but the judge is right. We do need a project. Something worthwhile in this club. Like Bullard. We don't get along too well, but I can't help admiring him for taking care of that little French boy. I've been thinking about that little fellow. Too bad Mr. Bullard can't be here to meet him. Yes, it is. See, wait a minute. There's a project for us, fellas. Let's take care of the boy till Bullard comes back from Florida. Us jolly boys take care of the kid. Hey, that's an idea, Commish. Yes, that would be a worthwhile project. Well, how are we going to talk to him? The only French I know is on them hair tonic bottles. <laughs> oh, I think we can make ourselves understood. And he can stay at my house. Not so fast, Judge. I thought of this. Well, Mrs. Peavy and I would be happy to take him. He might feel more at home with us. Mrs. Peavy has a World's Fair pillow with your Eiffel Tower on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Eiffel or no Eiffel, he's staying at my house. Says who? Me and the wife ain't got no kids. He's coming with me. But Floyd, Floyd don't well, be ridiculous. What? You wouldn't even know he was coming to town if I hadn't told you. Gossip. Gossip. Now, that's a fine attitude. Now, watch it, Judge. Stop waving that flute. He's coming to my he's house. He's coming to my house. Stop uh, it. Stop it. I wonder why we call this club the Jolly Boy. <laughs> on in Katie's parlor. <laughs> Won't do any harm to stop in for a minute. Maybe two minutes. Wonder if she's home. Better peek in the window. Yeah, yeah there she is. Knitting. Well, I'll hold the yarn for her. <laughs> Katie, beautiful Katie. You're the only... Well, Throckmorton. Yeah, hello, Catherine. I wondered who'd be ringing my doorbell at this hour. Well, I was just on my way home from the Jolly Boys. Won't you come in? Well, if you insist. <laughs> Mother just went up to bed. Good. <laughs> Sit down, Throckmorton. Thanks. <sighs> well, Catherine, you're going to be proud of the Jolly Boys. Oh, Guess you've read about that little French boy that Rumson Bullard is taking. Yes, yes, I read it in the paper tonight. Well, he's coming in before Bullard gets back from Florida, so the Jolly Boys are going to take care of him for two days. Well, that's wonderful, Throckmorton. Yeah, we decided to meet at Peavy's tomorrow and go to the train together. Ah, where is he going to stay? Mm, well, there's a slight difference of opinion about that. The judge and Floyd think they should keep him, and Peavy thinks he should. And, of course, you think you should keep him. yeah. <laughs> Of course, I haven't figured out how to get him yet. <laughs> you jolly boys are wonderful. You say the little boy is French? Yeah. His name is Jean-Pierre Bousset. <laughs> oh, I'd love to talk to him. Oh, do you speak French? Oh, dear. Only a little. I, I have a French and English dictionary there in the bookcase. Can you reach it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is this the one? That's it. Uh, uh, by the way, Catherine, how do you say, how'd you like to stay at my house in French? Uh, let's see. Um, voulez-vous rester... Oh, <laughs> I know what you're up to, Throckmorton. Well, if I'm the only one who can invite him over, you'll have to come with me. Oh, very clever. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine, do you mind if I take this little dictionary along with me? No, no, of course not. And if I can help you, you let me know. Well, there is one question I always wanted to know how to ask in French. Oh? What question? Uh, maybe I'd better try to find it myself first. <laughs> Let's see here. Hmm? You're, you're looking under the cave. Mm-hmm. Uh, could it be that you're trying to find voulez-vous me donner un baiser? What does that mean? It means, will you give me a kiss? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did you guess? How did you know? Well, I know you. <laughs> That's the question, all right. Catherine, may I have a kiss? No, absolument. Bonsoir. What's that? That's the answer. What does it mean? Absolutely not. Good night. Hmm. I'd have done better in English. <laughs> oh, what the beautiful morning. Oh, uh, uh, good morning, Mr. Pearson. Old two pants. <laughs> uh, let's see here. How do I say, would you like to come to my house? Uh, Voulez-vous rester chaise moi? <laughs> yeah, pretty good. All right, George, little Jean Pierre will come and stay at my house because I'll be the only one who can speak French. <laughs> You're sly, Gildersley. Ah, uh, good morning, PV. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersley. Haven't Floyd and the judge shown up yet? Well, they should be here any minute. I'm just getting ready to close up now to go down to the depot. Fine. Peavy, guess what this means. Voulez-vous rest there, chase moi? And that means how would you like to stay at my house? <laughs> <laughs> Peavy, how did you know? I learned it in the French dictionary. Don't tell me you've got one of those things, too. Well, I've had it for some time. Mrs. Peavy's parrot had some French words in its vocabulary, and I got curious as to what they were. Oh? They weren't in the dictionary. <laughs> well, here's the judge. Wearing a beret. Look at that. <laughs> Hello, Horace. Morning, Judge. Bonjour, messieurs. Comment allez-vous? <laughs> Zeke, the judge, has a dictionary, too. Well, that's all I've learned, Gildy, except how to invite the boy over. Voulez-vous rester? Yeah, we know, Judge. Chase Moy. Oh. Oh, here's Floyd. Now we can leave for the station. Bon jour, Monsieur. Yep. <laughs> Not you, too, Floyd. <laughs> Look, fellas, I picked up a French dictionary. A very original idea. I ain't cut a head of hair all morning trying to learn this French. Great. A fine conversation we'll carry on with a boy. All anybody has learned is how to invite him over to his house. Oh, yeah? Get a load of this. Huh? Poor Sulager, Le Perry Crone, Sec Adoretta, Les Chavooks, Tom Bortz. <laughs> what does that mean, Floyd? To relieve dry scalp and stop falling hair. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Floyd, you'll never get him to your house with an invitation off a French hair tonic bottle. Personally, gentlemen, I think we should stop quibbling over who'll take care of the boy. I'm in favor of that. Say, why don't we get our instruments and welcome him at the station with the Jolly Boys Band? That would make a big hit with the little Frenchman. Yeah, sure. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I think you're right, Peavy. Let's go to the depot toot sweet and leave out the toots. <laughs> <laughs> We'll rejoin Gildy and the Jolly Boys at the depot in just a minute. In 1950, one smart way to keep the food budget in line is to use up the leftovers. Glamorize them into another good dish the family will go for. So here's an easy recipe that turns that trick. It's the recipe for a satin-smooth, rich-tasting cheese sauce. Made the easy way with Kraft smooth-melting cheese food, Velveeta. 
With this delicious Velveeta sauce, you can stretch a little leftover chicken or fish or seafood or ham or veal into another swell main dish that the family will applaud. Here's all you do to make that wonderful sauce. In the top of your double boiler, melt one half pound of Velveeta, the cheese food with the rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor everybody likes. You can use the half pound Velveeta package, or you can slice off a half pound from the handy two pound Velveeta loaf. When the Velveeta is melted, stir in one-fourth cup of milk and season to taste. That's all there is to it. And say, is that sauce licking good on vegetables and eggs, too. And what's more, Velveeta sauce is mighty nutritious, too. That's one important reason why it's so popular in homes, whether or youngsters. Better get your refrigerator stocked with Velveeta for both thrifty cooking and snacks and sandwiches, too. Do it tomorrow, sure thing. To help you keep the food budget in line, get Kraft's famous cheese food... Velveeta. Now let's get back to things in Summerfield. In their gesture of hands across the sea, the Jolly Boys have almost come to blows over who's going to take care of the little French boy who's coming in on the train this noon. Well, fellas, it's agreeable to let little Jean-Pierre go home with the one he likes best, huh? Sure, sure. Let him take his choice. Good plan, Gilda. After all, the important thing is to have a home for the boy to go to. And Mr. Bullard will be back in two days to claim it. Fine. We're all jolly boys yeah. again. <laughs> well, no matter who gets him, I think it'd be nice to have a little party for him at the club tonight. I'll bring the Cokes. Splendid. Yeah, we can all bring the kid a present. Maybe he had a slim Christmas. Yeah. Ah! Leroy! Well, hello, Leroy. Hi, Leroy. Hi. Good morning, Leroy. Hi. Leroy, what are you doing down here? Well, gosh, you've been talking so much about this French kid, I got curious. Well, I'm glad you're here, my boy. You can be part of the welcoming committee. Hey, here she comes. Huh? Yeah, look out for us. Yeah, that's it, all right. 11.58, right on time. Yeah. Out the Hey, anybody getting off looks like a Frenchman? Well, the porter is taking off a bag with some stickers on it. Unc, look who's getting off. I bet that's him wearing the blue cap. Oh, yes. Yeah, come on, gang. I'll race you. Wait a minute. Boy, don't frighten the boy. Move over. Uh, um, Jean-Pierre Bousset? We. Oui. Uh, we? Oui? Who else is there? Yeah. <laughs> that means yes, Leroy. Est-ce que vous êtes Monsieur Bullard? Huh? He's saying something about Bullard, Gilda. Oh, yes. I guess he thinks I'm Bullard. Yeah. Well, I'm not Mr. Bullard. I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Do you understand? Savvy? No. <laughs> you will see Monsieur Bullard later. <laughs> Beautiful friend. <laughs> Wait a minute, Gildy. Let me take charge. What? Come over here, my boy. What's he doing? Oh. Pierre, voulez-vous rester chez moi? Je ne comprends pas. J'ai voyagé de la France pour le vieux chemin de fer demeurer avec la famille Boulard. Où est-il? Well, uh... you asked for it, Judge. Take it. <laughs> Gosh, that kid talks faster than my wife. Je le regrette, mais je ne parle pas l'anglais. <laughs> Look, let somebody in there who understands kids. Hey, who do you want to go home with, Butch? <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Voulez-vous rester chez moi, little man? Je ne sais pas. He doesn't seem to want to go home with any of it. <laughs> Qui est ce garçon? He's pointing at Leroy. Comment vous appelez-vous, garçon? Yeah, talk to him, Leroy. Are you kidding? <laughs> well, do something. You're the only one he seems interested in. Gosh. Hey, have you ever seen a baby turtle? Look, I got one in my pocket. A turtle. Laissez-moi tenir le turtle, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> Well, little John Pierre is holding Leroy's turtle and smiling. <laughs> yeah, we broke the ice. I guess Leroy's the only one who can talk to him. Yeah, turtle talk. <laughs> Gildy, it seems that you get to take John Pierre. Yeah, well, I've got him. I don't know what I'm going to do with him. <laughs> Take little Jean-Pierre upstairs and find a nice clean towel for him, huh? 
He'll want to take a bath after his long train ride. Okay. And Leroy, you show him where he's going to sleep tonight. Where is he going to sleep? Well, you'll have your room, my boy. My room? Yeah, we'll put the folding cot in my bedroom for you. For corn's sake, what did he have to come to our house for? Shh, now, Leroy, run along. Jean-Pierre, au revoir. Au revoir. Oh, phooey. <laughs> uh, Bertie! You call me, Miss Gill, please? Yes, Bertie. Uh, Bertie, how about fixing some French food for little Jean-Pierre, huh? A flaming crepe Suzette, perhaps. No, sir. Bertie ain't fooling with no fire dishes. <laughs> Bertie likes to serve food hot, but after she's gone to all the trouble of cooking it, she don't see no reason to light a match to it. Yeah. You know what I'm going to give that boy, Miss Gillsley? What, Bertie? Good old home cooking, American style. That sounds like a good idea. Yes, if that little boy's going to live in America, we got to help him be an American. Well, go to it, Bertie. Yes, sir. If anything will make a good American out of him, it's good old home cooking, American style. Yes, indeed. It's not bad, Bertie. That's right. Feed him good old home cooking, American style. <laughs> Uh, uh, by George, I can't wait for dinner. I must be a good American. <laughs> Leroy, stop kicking that rock and hurry up. We'll be late for the Jolly Boys. I'm hurrying, Huck. Wonder how Judge Hooker's getting along with John Pierre. All right, I imagine. Certainly was nice of the judge to take him for a drive around town before the club meeting tonight, huh? Yeah. <laughs> At least I got him out of our hair. Now, Leroy, I'd like to have you cooperate a little more. That's all I've been doing. Tried to play baseball with him, and he couldn't even hit the ball. Hmm? He swings like a girl. Well, Leroy, you can't expect him to be as good at our games as you are. There must be a lot of things little Jean-Pierre can do better than you can. Yeah? Like what? Well, he can... Uh... I mean, uh, that is, um... He can yakety-yak in French. What else can he do? Mm, that's all he's done so far. <laughs> but, Leroy, I'm certain he's a fine boy. Here we are. Well, he's doing one thing for me. He's getting me up to the Jolly Boys Club tonight. <laughs> well, we thought you should be along, Leroy. That sounds like you to him, Leroy. Hi, Commish, Leroy. Hi. Well, I guess everybody's here now. Yeah, I guess we are. Well... Uh... Bonsoir, Jean-Pierre. Bonsoir, monsieur. <laughs> How's everything uh, and everybody getting along? You mean with him? i never seen such a guy, Commish. What? I spent two bucks for a football and he didn't know what it was. Tried to spin it like a top. <laughs> <laughs> shh, shh, Lloyd. Well, he don't know what I'm talking about. You see what I mean, Unc? Well, Leroy, we sort of have to work these things out, you know. Yeah. I got along with a boy famously. I stopped at the music store and picked up the music for La Marseillaise. Huh? Yeah, the French national anthem. La Marseillaise. Oui, bon, bon. Bon, but say, that got a rise on him. <laughs> That's something the boy understands. Why don't we get our instruments and play it for him? Well, well we might try it. Where's my violin? I'm willing to try anything, but two-buck football sure didn't go over. Yeah. Now, Floyd... We mustn't expect too much of little Jean-Pierre. Hey, who's going to play the drums? Hey, why don't we let Leroy do that? He's got rhythm. Oh, boy! Don't you break that drum, Leroy. <laughs> Leroy, wait for the rest of us. Well, I'm ready. Let's play it for him. I'd better try this first. Yeah. <laughs> seems to have more notes than the beautiful blue Danube. How bon, monsieur? Fais je prendre le violon? How's that? Uh, I think he wants your, uh, viol your violin, uh, Peavy. Oh, oh. Might as well give it to him, Peavy. I guess he feels left out. What if he does ruin the piece? Very well. Here you are. Merci. Well. Hey, listen to him. He can play it. Pretty good, eh, Leroy? Sounds like he's taking music lessons. <laughs> Sounds to me like he gives them. <laughs> Gee, he's good well, What do you know, a Josie Etoibi on the violin and we didn't know it <laughs> Merci, monsieur Voici le violon yeah. mm. He wants you to take your violin, Peavy <laughs> yeah, I don't want to after that <laughs> What's he tapping the pencil for? I think he wants to lead the orchestra Lead the orchestra? Oh, and 
I'll ask him. Uh, direct Ed Moule Orchestra? Oui, monsieur, mais oui. <laughs> you understood me. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere with the kid. Get your horn, Commissioner. Yeah, I've got it. If there's anything this broken down outfit needs, it's a leader. Vous êtes prêt, monsieur? Get ready with your fiddle, Peter. Yeah, Peavy. Just follow Jean-Pierre, and I'll bet you play as well as he did. Well, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but I'll try. <laughs> Attention. Commencez. <laughs> I knew that boy was all right. This is the best we ever played. The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. When the gang at your house asks for a handout, your smartest move, Mother, is just to set out some bread and Velveeta. Let them fix their snacks with Kraft's good-eating cheese food. Let them spread or slice the Velveeta thick. Toast it to a bubbling gold if they like. You can stand back and smile, for although you're being an indulgent mother, you're being very wise, too. Like the milk you urge your children to drink, that Velveeta is rich in food values they need. And Velveeta is as digestible as milk itself, too. So keep stocked with packages or the two-pound loaf. For quick snacks and husky luncheon sandwiches, too, get Kraft's wholesome, good-eating Velveeta. Jean-Pierre. Bonsoir. <laughs> Bonsoir. Well, how are you two getting along? Oh, we're having a keen time. Jean's catching on fast. I got him throwing the football. Oui, oui. Football, football. Yeah, football. Well, good, good. I'm making a real American out of him, Monk. Yeah? You ought to hear him talk. Go ahead, John. Show him how you can talk American. Oui, oui. American. Yeah, imagine Leroy teaching his little friend to speak English. Hey, go ahead, Jean-Pierre. Say something for Uncle Throckmorton. Oh, for corn's sake. Ooh. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Kathy Lewis, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Dick Legrand, and Arthur Q. Bryan, with Jerry Farber as Jean-Pierre. Oh, yeah. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good night. Want to put magic in leftover meals? Then have plenty of Kraft prepared mustard on hand. Mustard makes hidden flavors pop right out of leftover meats, adds new life to salad or egg dishes. You can get two kinds of Kraft prepared mustard, you know. Salad mustard, mild, delicately spiced, or craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand, for when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get craft prepared mustard. Break the Bank, radio's biggest money-paying show, is next on...